Your voice to throat cancer can be a lifelong disability and, uh, well, the surgical removal of the larynx leaves you with very few medical options to get your speech back. Um, Not very wildly successful at all. Well, now a group of researchers from the Marx Institute at the University of Western Sydney have developed a bionic voice, electronic prosthesis for patients who no longer have the use of their larynx. Dr. Fazane Ahmadi is a biomedical engineer at the Marx Institute at the University of Western Sydney, and she's here to tell us about this new development. Good morning. Good morning, Wendy. Thanks for having me here. You are, well, it's lovely to have you. Thank you. Well, tell me in what circumstances a person would lose their larynx. I, and I mean, we know it's a cancer. Is that a very prevalent? Uh, Very common? Yeah, I guess this is the second most common cancer in head and neck area, the mm-hmm. throat cancer. One one reason is for that, but also for any reason for when the function of larynx is compromised, like for swallowing disorder, and so a, a, a person might have no option of um, except then uh, surgically removing the larynx. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, that must be... Uh, so a very difficult thing. I mean, so much a, a, a voice is so much a part of a person's identity, isn't it? We do take it for granted. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, this is a personal side of the things of how, why I did enter this field. A patient emailed me and he was a young singer and he said, I'm losing my voice and my voice is my life. Can you help me? And this became like the ambition of mine to come um, to alleviate the pain that these people are, are actually suffering from. Mm. And what is available to people at the moment, um, uh, Fasane? It's, it's. I suppose we it, it come. We hear a very mechanical sort of sound, yeah, don't that we? That is perfectly correct. Yeah, we have electrolarynx, which has been there for about fifty years now, with the mechanical robotic voice, and we also have some prosthesis called TE uh, valve, which is a plastic valve they place. Because after removal of the larynx, the windpipe and the foot pipe are separated. So this this is a plastic valve that is placed inside to redirect the air again inside the mouth. And they they have sort of voice and it is very intelligible, but it's basically an open wound. Yeah. Um, so bionics has actually emerged very fast over the last decade. And we have a lot of progress in many fields of bionics, but there was an absence of a solution for these patients to give them some sort of better voice, some sort of more natural voice. All right. Well, uh, tell us what we mean by bionics. What, what is bionics? Um, excellent question. Bionics is, the word comes from the combination of biology and electronics. Mm-hmm. It's when you replace a missing limb with an electronic solution. Now, bionic solutions majorly come in two categories. The first category is sensory bionic prosthesis, when you want to send some data to the brain, like bionic eye or bionic ear, for the brain to get some meaning of that. On the other side, we have motor prosthesis, when you want to understand what is brain commanding a missing link, like bionic arm. In that, in, in that sense, bionic voice also falls in the same category. So we are replacing the function of the missing la- larynx in terms of generating voice. Okay, so mm, this is very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me how it works. Um, so so basically, I mean, the, the first question is like how the human voice generation works in general. Um, an important distinction here is um, that we are not generating speech for people. We are generating only voice. Now, in a healthy person, voice is generated by vocal fold vibrations mm. and the rest is the beauty of human vocal tract. We shape that buzz sound generated by the larynx to speech. Yes. Now, these people are like the patients we deal with are perfectly functional, like they have moving face and lips muscles, yes. but yes. they are just mute. They don't have any voice. Mm. So so what we want to do is to put back in that vocal fold sound in, in their mouth, in a say. And the question that our research has to answer for that is how to control that buzz sound because your voice is very much coordinated with everything else that you do and and this co- this coordination is in a huge scale involuntary and this is also a beauty of it so 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 when you you are speaking you are not in control of turning your voice on and off constantly mm-hmm. this is directed by the brain stem 
And what we want to do is to bring that involuntary control into our problem and use it to control our, our prosthesis too. Ah, so you want the brain involved. Yes. Yes, so it becomes, the direction comes from the brain just rather than mechanically from the throat. Yeah. Um, well, no. yeah, that, that's, you tell me. <laughs> Is that what you mean? It, that's, that's half of the problem. Yes, yes, you are right. Well, basically three systems work, to work together to generate voice. Okay. Respiration, uh-huh. the larynx and the vocal tract. All of them are controlled by the brain stem and, and above that by the brain. Um, these people have respiration. They have lost the larynx, but they also have vocal tract. So our initial thought was to bring all of these together, respiratory control and what we call neural control, the controlled oh, circuitry yes. from the brain. Um, the beauty of what we have done and what, what the team have contributed at Marx Institute at Western Sydney University is that we have split the question into two steps. Now, we claim that only with respiration we can generate a voice that is as intelligible as the existing medical gold standard. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then we will add the nerve control on top of that later on to give the patient natural variations of intonation. Wow. Yeah. So instead of having um, a, a voice that sounds like that, that sounds very robotic, it will sound like this and have all that natural cadence and all that emphasis that I want to put on it. Will it sound like more like that? Yeah, in steps, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Our, we, with stage one, with natural control of respiration, mm. we, we claim that we can have a monotonic voice but very well intelligible. Yes. And with stage two, then we, we, we can also add intonation because because – Variations of intonations, at least at sentence level, comes from the brain. Yeah. And these people, they have the residual nerves. So, so the, the larynx is gone, but the nerves that used to control that can still be used in, to provide us this data to our prosthesis. Yes, yeah, so we get our intonation back. That is the point. Yeah. So how... Um, I know that you're working on it yet and it isn't sort of quite yet. You're trialling it at the moment. Tell me what the device would look like. Uh how big would it be? The device would be a coin size electronic prosthesis uh, that monitors respiration. And then ideally we would use electronic tattoo sensors to read the activity of the nerve after it is placed inside a muscle. Um, but what we have currently under trial in Sydney on adults is a respiratory source. So so it's a source that is controlled by the patient's respiration and uh, it acts very similar as the function of vocal folds when they are locked in a pl- in a fixed place. So, so this is what we have on the trial. The questions we have been answering, like the main question of the research of bionic voice is control. And the question that we have been answering so far is how to control voice on and off. Yeah. And n- now we have 96% of accuracy in controlling the voice on and okay. off compared to the existing gold standard. But there is a still some way to go. Um, we want to combine this. We want to play the sound inside the mouse, and that would be very exciting, uh, and let the patient to speak with it. Um, and there are also a lot of bells and whistles here that we needed to think to take care of. For example, it's not enough that you control the voice precise enough. You have to control the voice also fast enough. Yeah. Because yeah. for bionic arm, you have like the movements you want to control are in the order of seconds. We have orders of milliseconds, which is a thousand times less. So uh, a huge part of the effort at, uh, by the team at uh, Ben's mm-hmm. group at Marx went to making the algorithms also fast enough. Amazing stuff. And I believe that you've attracted interna- international interest? Uh, yeah, we have uh, presented the work in, in several conferences. Um, we have a collaboration with Singapore General Hospital mm-hmm. for trial of the, um, the solution for modulations of the pitch of the voice. And uh, well, isn't it interesting? I mean, it's every <laughs> every time you um, say something, we've got another we've got another little problem to solve, haven't we? We've got the pitch, we've got the on and off, we've got the the modulation, yeah. we've got the, um, the 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 speed. You know, yeah. I mean, yeah, lots and lots and lots of elements there in your research, which is what mm. uh, it has puzzled people for long. Um, yeah, but, I see, yeah. but. But I was lucky to be in a team uh, with uh, bioelectronics and neuroscience group at Marx. Mm. And and the, the good thing about their approach is that they take a systematic approach. Mm-hmm. So first of all, we broke the control into two steps and we claim that step one is feasible. And then 
we answered the question of how to have a fast algorithm. But yeah, the, the yeah. larynx has been an untouched temple for a long time. So, so yeah, yes, we I, are. I quite like mine. <laughs> <laughs> it's been very good to me. Yeah, yeah, it has. <laughs> Well, that all sounds absolutely fascinating. And so when do we really realistically think that this is going to be available to people? Um, How long away do we think? We, um, we have a window of six months. Six months? To, yeah, to, to, to do phase one of the trials of, of getting an intelligible source. Our source is currently like a bulky source and, and it runs on a laptop as a software. But um, for now, uh, we are inviting people in, people who have lost their larynx, if they are interested in our trials. Especially we have started a new lines of trials with Westmead. The Children's Hospital is Westmead, which is the largest mm -hmm. pediatric centre in New South Wales. Um, we are especially interested in children who, with tracheostomy, okay. children who have lost their voice, and we, we would welcome them also in the trials, yeah. All right. Well, if anyone is in that position uh, who would um, like to... Um, perhaps take part in that trial. They could get in contact with us here, could they? And yeah, we, absolutely. we'll pass on the number for you. Yeah, absolutely. One three hundred triple two seven oh two, that is a, a child maybe who uh, who could benefit from this bionic voice. Well it all sounds very amazing and thank you very much for coming and telling us all about it. Dr. Fazane Amadi, she's a biomedical engineer at the Marx Institute at the University of Western Sydney. Uh, yeah, thanks for having me. It was a great pleasure. I also I uh, wish to thank the Garnet Pass and Rodney Williams Memorial Foundation who has supported us for the research uh, for three years now and also the team, my supervisor, Professor Andre Van Schaik, who is the group leader at Benz for his excellent vision, Jonathan Tapson, Director of Marks, and Professor Kate Stevens, our Research Director. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you very much for joining us.